and welcome back to another episode of the Nothing to Do podcast. I am your host, Jeremy, and it's another special day. We have another very special guest here with us today, a Providence native who I would say has found his niche in capturing the beauty of Providence through his camera lens. Give it up for the very talented Rafael Medina. Yo, what's up, man? It's good to have you here, yeah, bro. You it's good to me. have you. Um, now, I know you as Ralph. Yeah. I know you as Ralph. And we actually, funny enough, uh, we go we go back, back. <laughs> way back, because he was very, very close friends with my cousin, and he awesome. is no stranger to Minerva's house parties. No. Oh, my God. <laughs> Absolutely not, bro. And that's how, yeah. I, that, I feel like that's how I always... Uh, remember meeting you and like yeah. i would always, i would always see you at her house parties yeah yeah absolutely man which were um we they were amazing they, they were, were i didn't really have that many friends that had like those type of parties and then like i think your your family is just so close and so welcoming you know what i mean yeah. like yeah, it's yeah. like something that when you start going to other people's like events or house stuff like you start seeing the difference in like how you guys are compared to other people so it's like yeah i've always i was always very grateful to be a part of that so yeah yeah bro and it was it was cool getting and i was only like you know i was probably only like 10 years old 11 12 here and there so i would see you in passing um but yeah i mean those do you have any (laughs) i I, I don't know do you have any like because i have even just as a kid i know i have crazy stories of those parties do you have any, like, you would, I, I'm just thinking about it now, like, just, <laughs> just random, one that just I random shit, yeah. I'm not sure if I, yeah. If you don't want to, yeah, if you don't yeah, want to no, talk about one. it, because <laughs> it, it could get wild, because I remember the one time I was, like, actually old enough uh, to, you know what, I feel like my story will be adjacent to your story, so I'll just tell it myself. Yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. Um, the first time I was actually able to, or not even able to drink, I was probably, like, 16, 17, and my cousin... He tried to sneak me some parrot bay. Yeah. And after like the second shot, my mom caught me. Uh, and I mean, you've you've been a part of the family for so long. I don't know if you remember my mom. Specific. My mom was like the she was the aunt in the family that was that struck fear in everybody. Yeah, she just didn't fuck around. She she did not fuck yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So because of that she was she didn't play. She shut it down. It was New Year's Eve, and we went home at like eleven. Yeah. She was like, "Fuck that." That's early for New Year's. And Eve? for New Year's Eve, we that's, went home at like crazy. eleven. Come to find out, stories riddled with, uh, with uh, I guess, a bunch of beef and fights. <laughs> and, like, yeah. the whole commotion <laughs> went down, like, and it's funny. Yeah. I mean, it's it's all love at the end of the day, no, like, man. you know. It's part, it's part of growing up. It's yeah, part, it's part of growing like up. environment, too, kind of going out yeah. and partying. I never, you know, it's funny, I never drank at any of your parties. Oh, wow, for real? I, only, I started drinking, like, at 27. I never used to drink. At all. Well, so yeah. like at those parties, me and Jabron were always the sober ones by any of the parties. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was yeah. like we saw everything, remembered everything, tried to help people yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. We were completely sober by the end of it. But it was it was it was an incredible experience, man. For real. Yeah, man. Wait, so why don't you you just you were you just not like into drinking? Were you like nervous about it? Or were you just like um, fu- like I've always seen like the negative sides of drinking with like certain people. Okay, so like yeah. it always turned me off to it. And then I also think I didn't take a lot of risks. Like, back then, I used to just mm-hmm. always kind of live my life the same way, do the same things every day. Sure, yeah. And I just was always fearful of, like, getting anything out of my comfort zone because I hated change, like, so passionately. Yeah. So it was, like, to me, it was, like, there's no point to this. Like, I think at one party, I think, like, out of all those parties I went to, I might have taken a shot twice. And, you know, we went to a ton of parties. Facts, so facts, it's facts. Like, so it was, like, that stuff never really... Uh, I never really wanted to do it. It wasn't until I got older, and then, like, my life started taking a huge change. I started... Stuff happened in my personal life where, like, you know, me and my uh, my previous relationship, we, like, split up. And mm-hmm. then, like, I was I was becoming curious on, like, the things that I haven't been doing. So I'm like, oh, I wonder what's what's up with drinking. You know what I mean? What's up yeah, with smoking? Yeah. What's up with all this stuff? So, and then after that, I started living very differently, I think. So I think I started being a little bit more free and more, and more open to, to, like, different things. So once that kind of started going on, it, it's... It's kind of it's been mad fun. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie. yeah I enjoy it. Yeah, I'm shit. not gonna lie to you. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. Shit. I definitely enjoy it. I only drink like if I go out. Like I, I never drink right, by right. myself at the house. I don't like none yeah. of that stuff interests me. It's like if if it naturally happens. Like I've been wanting to get a drink for mm-hmm. a few weeks, but it hasn't naturally happened. So like I'm not forcing yeah, yeah. it. But it'll come. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's like we're gonna get together with family later. So you never know. You know what I mean? And that's sort of like the good litmus test as to you know where <laughs> where you're. Your substance abuse or where it could go. Yeah, absolutely. It's like is I think the, that's the first step. It's like drinking at home. Yeah, yeah, that's because I find myself there's like because I you know with life in and I'm this I'm for the most part the same way. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But there have been times where I'm just like, you know, I get home from work. And I'll just and I'll have like a bottle of blue god yeah, yeah. there or something like and I'll start taking some shots and uh, I'm just like this isn't good. Yeah, and, yeah, and that's like, what it is. The thing with me is that I enjoy smoking, so like I smoke a lot. Okay, so yeah. it's like so that's like to me I'm not I'd rather do that because you could come down from that pretty easily. It's not it's not yeah. like drinking. Like the first time I first few times I smoked, I was like, Oh, like I, I loved it. Like especially mm-hmm. because somebody who listens to music a lot. I was I started hearing music differently, going to concerts like that. It gives you a different kind of like feeling yeah. from somebody who's always been to concerts. But then I remember the first time I got first time I got drunk, I was like, "Yo, this is fucking wild." I was <laughs> like, "This shit <laughs> is fact. heavy." I was like, "I am not driving on this shit." I am yeah. not. It was at one of my friend um, Giovanni's like a uh, Christmas party, but I was like fucked up. But it was like yeah. it was like a good experience, and I was like, "Oh, this is people are wild." Like to do this every every you day. Know what I mean? It's like, crazy. That and alcohol. It, I used to. For somebody who never drank or smoke, um, to like try them both, I was like, oh, there's no comparison. Like drinking's right. way more dating. There's no comparison at all. Facts. But it's like, but you know, I I understand it because it, it does feel good sometimes when you're somewhere, especially if you're a little uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. Thing, it loosens you up. It's it's, yeah. it's it's a dope feeling, I think. Yeah, bro. Even like I just got back from Miami for a week, and it's just like I'm so I'm like I'm like a work hard, play hard type mm-hmm. of guy. Like, like I'll be it's in your blood. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> facts, facts. Blood. Like when it, what, like when you tell little me, like when I'm on my shit, like yeah, I'm on my yeah. shit. I'm not drinking. Yeah, I feel you. Um, but then like if I have on vacation, I'm gonna fucking go hard. But it's just like you know, comes day three, day four, and I'm yeah. just like, damn. I'm like, it's like at this point, I'm just like, I feel like drinking is a responsibility. Yeah, man. <laughs> like, yeah, man. Just, like, like, like this is part of like I just have to fit this in. Absolutely. Which and listen, out of context, it that sounds really bad. Yeah. But yeah. you, we all, we've all been there. Yeah, like yeah, you're in yeah, DR, man. you're in fucking. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Funny enough, I I used to be the ill pothead. Um, and I stopped smoking last year, at least the way that I like, so, like very occasionally mm-hmm. I'll smoke like, like if I'm on vacation or if like my cousins rolled something, I'll take a hit. But even then, like after not smoking, I'm like, yo, y'all like, is weed supposed to be this loud? <laughs> like, <laughs> like I'll take I think a hit. because you haven't smoked. I think you that's what, what I mean? it is. Yeah. Smoked, that shit hits you a lot harder, I think. But it's, sure. it's weird. It, it went from being something that, um. That was like I would take the like you know how people they get home from work and they have a beer or whatever and like mm-hmm. that's what they not so not take, like they don't abuse it but it's it. like you're taking the edge off right basically. right yeah, like yeah, I, I was like that with weed, um, and it was like but like it got to a point where like my anxiety it, it like my anxiety took over more than like the negative effects of it were like killing me more and then I'm just mm-hmm. like but then I would still want to so I'm like why the fuck am I doing this yeah it's, it's like I think once you get into the habit of things. Yeah. Just, you're doing it out of habit. Like I yeah. feel that way uh, sometimes because I, I'm I'm pretty heavy smoke. I don't I don't speak much about it, but I am. And um, but it's like sometimes you get into the habit of things, and it's not you're not doing it. You're not doing it because it logically makes sense. It's just a habit of yours. So you're just yeah, like, oh, right. Been, you know, I'm just right. doing, I'm picking it up. I'm doing it again. You know. So it's like sometimes it's hard to break break out of that unless you're consciously like realizing that and consciously saying, oh, yeah. I need to step back and kind of maybe not make that decision today or maybe not make that decision this day and stuff like that. But yeah, man. Do you feel like it, 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 uh, especially, I mean, especially because you started a lot later. So, like, do you feel like it, it enhances, like, it's on that side where it's like enhancing your creativity, your inspiration, <laughs> and like you're like feeling good and relaxed? Or, like, yeah. it, it, is that something? Cause I, it, for me, it definitely was like, like mm-hmm. that in a lot of ways. Even like, I would like to, like, I would get high and like play sports, and I feel like I would like, be better like more focused I, <laughs> Wait, were you, I was gonna say were you actually better they're <laughs> probably like a fucking know, probably not. just like fucking smoking again <laughs> you're back. just like slacking off in the field they're just like back. oh wait um i don't I, I, you know, sometimes I do say that but i don't know if that that might just be in my head so i don't really preach it too much yeah, you know what yeah, i mean yeah. like i think um i just naturally i try to be upfront of upfront with myself about certain things so i just think i just naturally enjoy it and i think that you know, if I'm editing photos, it's something nice to just be like, if I'm in my own zone, like it kind of just puts you like, you know, you get a little bit more focused yeah. sometimes and stuff. It does kind of get you tired sometimes. So that's something I have to be conscious of. But it's yeah. like when I go out, even when I go out to shoot, I always smoke before I shoot. Okay, so it's just yeah, like, yeah. I, and it's like, I don't even overthink it because it's just something that, it's, you know, I just enjoy doing, especially by myself, right. I shoot by myself most of the time. So it's like, I feel like I'm in my own world and it's, right. it feels really relaxing. It feels really yeah. cool. Like it's, um. Yeah, yeah, so it's like, but I am I am trying to be a little more conscious of it this year. Where it's kind of not doing it all the time. Like every time mm-hmm. I'm gonna do it, kind of trying to think like, oh, why am I doing this? You yeah, know what I mean, because yeah. it's like, like you said, you could just let her. That was at one point I was just I was doing it a lot more right, than right now. So it's like I'm just trying to find basically trying to find that balance, you know. Yeah, and I as think as, as you get busier too. 
sometimes you don't always have the time. So like if you pack in your schedule with things that you're kind of trying to accomplish, you don't always find the time to do certain things that aren't always like the best for you too. Right. Yeah. It's funny. Even like even the fact that I'm having this conversation is weird because it's like I'm, I think about it like in retrospect and it's just like now like even having this conversation, I'm like, I sound like like a fucking like like an old dude like like, <laughs> <laughs> like do you like I, I i should just be using the word like pot at this point yeah, like, no. not even like but you know what i'm saying i know what you mean um but yeah no, but sometimes like even last time i was here when i was here with michael um he smoked i, I think that's what it is like i i just can't be smoking like loud no more and i'll still have a good time because last time he was here he wrote he had something rolled up and we smoked mm-hmm. you know while he was recording and like i was like i had like a really good time and I was like, yeah, like this is what I remember, bud. Yeah, like, like, like why I used to smoke yeah, and yeah, shit like that. Course. Like, it, it's a cool. It's it's also, you know, I know people have a lot of stuff. Like, I remember growing up, people was like, oh, I want to have a drink with you, this, this, and that, but I didn't yeah. drink. But it's like, I also like the idea of like smoking with somebody because you kind of get into different conversations. So it's like, it's like right. the idea of like having. I enjoy having yeah. a drink with somebody now. Like I, when I was young, I didn't see the value in it, but like I see the value sometimes, and just going out and enjoying yourself, you know, right. with with certain people. Um, so it's the same thing with weed sometimes. So it's yeah. just like I enjoy there's sometimes when you smoke with certain people, you get different conversations out of them. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like it's a like it's a cool thing for me at least. But it's like, you know, like I said, it's not for everybody. That's not something, yeah. you know, not everybody can control it. Um, I've seen it. I've seen people just like are just super lazy on it, too. There's certain people that. Yeah, just like, yeah. They just make it look so. terrible. And it's like but I also understand Facts. how consuming it can be. So it's like it, it all makes sense to me. It's just like you, you're the one is in control. So you kind of have to make that, you know, yeah. the best foot forward to kind of change. So. Yeah. Yeah, man. But I want to go back to, I mean, you mentioned, you know, you used to get high. You get high before you go out and shoot. Ralph is a fucking dope-ass photographer, which is one of the big reasons why I asked him to come on the show today. He's doing big things right now. Um, His camera is taking him places. And it's really cool to see, especially somebody from Providence, somebody that, you know, that I've known, um, you know, not you know, in, I would say in passing. I yeah, guess of course, in passing of course, absolutely. when I was younger, and like I really appreciate you coming here today. Um, I mean, I think you touched on it earlier, but like, what I, I don't know how no, how new is this for you? Like, so like I, I've been doing it for so it's about five years now. Five years. Yeah, yeah. So it's and, about five years. And what kind of got you? Like, what kind of inspired you to like to pick up the lens and like or pick up a camera and like really. And just start like working at it. Like, it, did it start off as a hobby or like did it start off as something? You know? Yeah, so I've always wanted to do it. Like, I think subconscious, I've always wanted to do it. Um, but I've never, I've always been too insecure to, like, try anything new. So that yeah. was, like, how, kind of how I used to, that's how I used to live. So it was, like, I would want to do something, but I would think, oh, I can't do that. Like, I just mm-hmm. saw there was, like, something blocking me from being able to do something. So, mm-hmm. like, I used to, with Jabron, when we and Jabron would go to concerts. Mm-hmm. I would shout meet, out Jabron, Yeah, shout way. out Jabron, of course. Yeah. Me and Jabron would go to concerts. I would meet a lot of his friends. Jabron Mato, so I would meet his yeah. photographer friends. I don't know, and I would always think, like, oh, I wish I could do that. Like, it's such a stupid thing to say to yourself. Right. Because you're, you're already limiting yourself by, like, speaking to yourself that yeah. way. But that's how yeah. I would speak to myself. Absolutely. I would be like, yo, oh, I wish I could do that. Oh, I wish I could shoot concerts. Oh, I wish I could do this. So, like, it never hit me that I was capable of doing it, you know, until... Once again, a lot of, like, after, like, my mid-20s and stuff, and a lot of things started changing, like I said earlier. And I started becoming, like, more curious about, like, some of the stuff that I wasn't doing before. And then I became, I started building more, my confidence a lot more. So it's, mm. like, that's something that's something to, to me that's, like, super, super important. Like, building that confidence to allow you to to understand that you're capable of doing anything that you want to. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it was, like, that's, that's not an overnight thing. That took years of me just trying to do this a little bit better, doing this better, that. So it's, like, once I realized that I was capable i just had to actually do it mm. that's when i was like oh, okay then maybe i can do what i want to do you know so mm-hmm. it was like it was hard to it was hard to even get it started so it was hard to get a i had a ca- i had a camera for like years that i just touched for like the first two months and i just never did anything with it for years yeah so it was like it was hard just like going out to shoot for the first time it was like what am i like what am i doing I right, like, right, right, right. Fucking paparazzi guy you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> you know? so it's like and then like i'm seeing people doing it like in other s- states usually new york yeah. um for the most part so it's like i was like but there's you know i was like i don't know if i could do that out here it's providence it's like super quiet and stuff mm-hmm. so but once i started once i picked it up uh, you know i was kind of trying to go full force with it and it was after like the first two years that I started like kind of really seeing what I was capable of. Cause at the end of those years, I would always see what I did wrong that year. And then uh-huh. like, I would like evaluate the things that I did good and bad that year. Yeah. 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 And, like I would keep making the same mistakes kind of year after year. And I was like, all right, I have to change yeah. some shit to like, kind of like if I'm, if I need different results, I need to have different actions, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. I feel like with photography, it's a good, it's a nice medium, uh, 
to or more comfortable medium, I would say, to like assess yourself mm-hmm. and like pick apart your work to in order to be better. At least personally, I'm speaking of it I, like from a podcasting standpoint, just like listening to yourself speak in general. Yeah. Is like so cringing sometimes. Oh my God, bro. I, oh. So it's like I, I been, and it's terrible. I've been working on my YouTube video. Right, Even though right. I finish it, I'm gonna post it tomorrow. So I'm really excited about it. Uh-huh. But it's not like the greatest. You know what I mean? Right, but right, I know right. I have to. You have to go through those steps to get better. So mm-hmm. it's like understanding that that's fine. But it's very uncomfortable watching myself, hearing yeah. myself cut so much type of, so much shit. I have to cut. Right. It is so it's so uncomfortable. It's bro. Ve- yeah, it's very uncomfortable. Um, and that's funny. And it's like. And it's interesting you say, and I think, so in, on, I will say on this show, I get very meta on this show about this show. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> Right? I do that all the time. And just creative processes in general. And I like openly talk about like, you know, when I'm feeling uninspired yeah, or unmotiv- unmotivated or whatever it may be. Um, but I think when we pursue, like when we pursue something mm-hmm. artistic or a hobby, whatever it is. Like, I think results, you can't be driven by results or, like, you won't, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, you could obviously have those goals in it, like, as a goal. Of course. But, like, I mean, and it's, it's at this point, it's, like, you know, it's a cheesy thing to say and you hear it everywhere. Like, yeah, you fall in love with the journey. You yeah, fall in love with the it, process. what it is, though. And it is what it is. Do you ever find yourself questioning whether you love the process or not? I, and I say that, I say that because... Deep down, I do, you know, I do love what I love this. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be three years in doing this, you know, if if I was just doing this for followers and Absolutely. likes and all that stuff. Um, but it's like regardless, it's like no matter how much you can fall in love with something, like it really, it feels like a chore to keep it going. And it's like people, and then you hear it all the time saying it's like, it's those days where you feel like you sh- you can't, you don't want to do it is when you should do it the most. By far. Um, I don't know how, like how often do you feel that way for, with photography, if ever? And like, what, how do you get yourself out of that? Like, how, and how do you even get yourself out of, maybe you're not feeling as creative as you think you might be. And mm-hmm. like, well, how do you spark that in yourself? I've learned that just doing the things that you're supposed to be doing mm-hmm. always helps out. Like, you know, in the beginning it was difficult for me because I'm trying, because I'm trying to understand what you know where i fit in this like field mm-hmm. or whatever so like i don't really know what I, i've you know i still don't know what i'm doing but like i really don't know what i was doing in the right beginning, you know so it's like i'm taking photos a few people liking it you know you're you feel self-conscious because you're just starting you know you have mm-hmm. a personal page that's a little way more popping than like your photography page yeah and you're just trying to find that balance like i used to always try to in the beginning it used to be like i need to get at least two more followers in my personal page and it just felt impossible like right completely impossible at the time um, but it was like, it was just a small goal that I know it wasn't as important, but I was just trying to reach, but it was like, it was very difficult to, to just kind of keep that momentum going because after a while you get, it gets stale. You're like, what am I doing? You're like, yeah, I'm not, sometimes you get in your head and you look at your views and you're just yeah. like, shit, like this isn't even, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, that's, and, that's like the, the death of anything. Yeah, for real. <laughs> bro, it's just looking it's, it's tough. how many plays, yeah. how many views, how many likes. Absolutely. And the thing is that I don't, I don't always, I, I very rarely look at my views, like mm-hmm. for certain things. Like I don't, I don't really look at my story views too much. I don't really look at who looks at my stories like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but like back then I try not to do it, but like once in a while, like I would do it. I'm like, man, I was like, I put so much work into this. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> right, like, right. Fuck. Of course. Especially with like concert photography. Cause like concert photography in the beginning, you know, people would always show me a lot more love with my street photography, but concerts mm. like didn't really get that much love. Unless like you kind of were at the show. Right. Like, I was right. Always shooting like local shows, like no, no big venue would give me an opportunity. So like, it was cool for me, but like I used to overly edit. So like, I remember like I used to overly edit and overly post on my stories. So like, I remember mm. posting like fucking dozens of photos on my stories. One time in this like concert that I worked really hard at for um, the Daily Note, and mm. I remember at the end I was like looking at the views and it was, like twenty yeah. something, thirty something. Yeah, yeah, and I was yeah. like, damn, I worked so hard. Facts, <laughs> but, Thanks. It's Thanks. Like, but it's understanding that that's fine. That's part of the process. It's not if you're always looking for that type of validation, you'll never get to where you need right. to get to. Yeah. You know? So it's like I learned that I learned that I just had to keep doing what I want to do, what I have to be doing. Like right. you know, I didn't. There was a there was a few times in the beginning when I started doing concert work that wouldn't get a lot of love on my page that I would always I would think oh I have to make another con- another another page mm-hmm. for concert photography like I have to split this up because this isn't working mm-hmm. and I'm just like already like planning it I talked to my girlfriend about it I talked to Jabron about it mm-hmm. you know um, and I remember like 
Jabron was just like, yeah, that's not that's not a good idea. Like, because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like I'm already have two pages. I can't I can't even properly manage my photography page. I want to have right. another page, you know. So it was like realizing like, yo, bro, you you're focused on the wrong thing. Just work, you know. I, mm-hmm. I kept trying to make my page look a certain way. The aesthetics look a certain way. Yeah, yeah. I, when I used to post, I would post three photos that would like complement each other because I wanted it to be like you know just like to look clean. Mm-hmm. All that stuff is nonsense. Right, just right. Post, you know, once I started posting, and I remember after after I tried to make that concert page and i just ended up not doing it and i just started focusing on just my work more than anything mm-hmm. i remember like after a certain amount after a certain months pass um my boy um my boy rainier hit me up and he was like yo he was like yo I, I, your page is really cohesive and like yeah. i was that shit caught me off guard because i was yeah, like yeah. oh wow i was like i was trying so hard back then i could never get it and i didn't and I, but i was so focused on the work that i didn't even notice that i was mm-hmm. building this editing style that was a little bit you know that was cohesive right right so right. it's like because i was just focusing on the work to me, that kind of ends up just like getting me out of the funk sometimes. But it's yeah, like you get back into it too. You know, I, I was in that funk last year, maybe like around a lot of personal stuff was going on. But like, yeah, yeah, last year, like around like September, um, getting out of the summertime, and it was like I don't know, I wasn't that interested in photography as much. I wasn't like that inspired when I go to the city because mm-hmm. you could also get tired of shooting the same things. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Of course. So it's like I ended up um, I had to switch. I decided to switch the type of lens that I shoot with mm-hmm. and the type of camera that I shoot with just because I was like, maybe a change of pace would work. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And that did work. That helped out a lot. So I think I think changing stuff, too, is important. <clears throat> if you ever find yourself, like, stuck somewhere or you feel, like, uninspired, yeah. like, do something differently, maybe go somewhere differently. And Facts. Like that. Facts. I mean, yeah, that, I mean, yeah. That's what <coughs> the, the last... I, I mm-hmm. Right now, like, I go through those ebbs and flows all the time, too. And most recently was... Beginning of this new year, I was like, um, I think the la- I, I filmed an episode with a guest here, like, mm-hmm. you know, a week before I got my ankle surgery. Mm-hmm. And then I was out of commission, like not able to do anything for like at least a month. Mm-hmm. Like before I even got in the boot, like I was still in like the splint, like I couldn't move or nothing. Yep. And then um, when I came here and recorded because I was like, All right, I need to get, you know, a new 2023. Let me get an episode. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And I remember coming here and just being like very <laughs> like open about how fucking vulnerable I was feeling yeah. about it, how uninspired I was feeling about it. And then I think the last re because that's the thing too. So I had I, I mentioned this to you earlier, I had a co host. Yep, we did yep. it for a year and you know, it's a lot easier to bounce ideas, bounce conversation yeah. off somebody else. And then when he wasn't able to do it anymore, you know, I wasn't gonna stop the podcast. So I just, you know, I I trudged on along by myself. Um, but then even that, it got stale. And so I, I, what I've been doing recently, and I don't know if you, if you know, I don't think I actually posted anything out of it, but like mm-hmm. now I just, I don't even sit down. I don't, I only set this up if I have somebody here, like I just record with one camera and I do it like stand, like standing up, like yeah, I'm in like yeah, a stand up, uh, like a comedian or some yep, shit. Yep, yep. <laughs> and I noticed that my, like my ideas flow a little better. So it is, it is a lot of those little things like that. just like little tweaks oh, that like to, to find, um. Uh, your inspiration and stuff, but um, it's funny. It's like because I <laughs> and I've, I've mentioned this before on the show. Um, I actually and I, cause you how you say like in terms of getting you were talking about like getting out of your comfort zone. Try mm-hmm. you like you never never thinking that you'd be able to like do something like this. Mm-hmm. I mean, my dad is Sola Garcia. You know, Sola Sola. You know, he has. Oh, yeah. Don't say the name. Of course, yeah. And um, <laughs> so like I've been. This has been. Sort of like I guess in a way I've like man like my life has manifested this podcast yeah yeah absolutely man. in a lot of ways and I used to talk about it when I used to live in New York I used to talk about starting one all the time and I never and I never did and what actually got me to start this to actually get up off my ass and start this podcast uh, was I mean, she's my ex now she starts she like started one and I like stumbled like across. Mm-hmm. Her fucking thing, and I'm like, she's fucking doing. Yeah. I'm like, I'll fucking do it. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's true, man. It's, it's I, just, it's just doing it. Right, like, right. We always overthink it, being like, oh, how could they do? No, they're just doing it. Right, you know right, I mean? right. And it's like, it's, it's my insecurities. You should always get the best of me because I was very judgy of like people that I thought were doing things that weren't good. Like mm-hmm. I would think like, oh, oh, this is, you know, like it's me back then. It's not understanding that my judginess is coming from my own insecurities. So I'm just right. like. Oh, that's not good. Oh, this person thinks he's good or this is like, and I'm just saying this to myself, you know? Mm. And then after I realized like, it wasn't until like more years pass and I'm like, Oh wait, that person's right. And I'm wrong. Right. I'm, I'm the one who's wrong because they're trying something and they're doing, and they might not be the best in the beginning, mm-hmm. but they will get better. 
my mm. lack of effort is preventing me from accomplishing anything. You know, yeah. while, I, while, I, while, I, while everyone's out here like crushing it, mm. you know what I mean? So then I, then I, I started changing the way I viewed people. Um, just like kind of just, you know, the way them doing something was inspiring to mm. me. It was like, okay, no, they have it right. I have it wrong. I need to get my shit together. So it's yeah. like, you know, that's why a lot of times when I see certain people hate on certain things or hate on other uh, other people's like um just journey like i it's cool for me to talk to them because mm-hmm. it's i know where that comes from so like mm-hmm. I, I don't take too much offense to certain things sometimes yeah, because yeah i'm yeah. just like that person seems like it's more it's more about them like your why is more important to me than what you're doing so it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. that's usually more about yourself why you're saying certain things so it's like facts it's, it's, yeah it's hard to it's hard to get cross it's hard to get past that though because and say so when you're insecure, bro, like <laughs> yeah, nothing, yeah, like I mean, absolutely uh, right. nothing. You know, nothing could over. Like you think every single t- every time you want to do something, you always find a reason. You talk yourself out of it. Oh, I can't do this because of this, or I don't. You know, I don't have this. I don't have the confidence. Oh, I'm not that type of person. Like I said all the time. Oh, that's not me. Right. And that's like that shit's garbage. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? like, what, no, what of course. About? Like you do what the fuck you want. <laughs> that's funny. That's yeah. something I still struggle with, though. Of like, course. do you? I think it's part you, of the journey. Do you feel like? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Do you feel like you're inspired by other photographers? Oh, 100%. Now, yeah. 100%. Like, when I first started shooting out here, honestly, I didn't really see anybody out here shooting. And I'm not saying that nobody out, out here was shooting. Yeah, yeah, You know, but I didn't see anybody out here shooting because I wasn't, you know, I wasn't too familiar with um, street photography from Providence, except for, like, your usual, like, city shots, state house shots. Like, you know, everything is kind of just, like, landscape stuff. Right, right. I didn't right. really see people, like, in the streets like that. So, like, in the beginning, it was, like, I used to think, like, what are you doing? Like, what the fuck am I doing? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't really know what I'm doing. But it was, like, so, like, after a certain amount of times passed, I started seeing other people doing it. And I feel like just people going out there and shooting, just seeing that it's inspiring to me. Like, oh, I gotta get my shit, my, my shit together. Cause mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, so I'm very competitive. I don't, yeah, yeah, I, don't yeah. I don't speak about it. Like it's, right, it's right, always right. internal. But I'm very competitive with people. I, yeah. And, it's, and once again, it's always just like it keeps me on my toes. I'm competitive with people, but I'm much more competitive with like my, <clears throat> with like my past self too. Like right. What, what yeah. did I do before and stuff like that? But when I see somebody accomplish something that. That I maybe wanted to accomplish is like, damn. I was like, all right, kind of like, let, what? Is, yeah, I'm yeah, curious, yeah. Oh, what did that person do differently? Or what is, you know? Right. So it's like I, I get inspired that way too. You know, yeah. I, I remember one. Um, I don't know if you know this photographer from out here named JPEG Johnny. So he's no, like, no, no, yeah. No. So he's like a really great um, photographer from out here. He does a lot of concerts and he and he works with like one a, a rapper from out here. And um, but I remember one time I was shooting. At this moment, I was I was starting to find momentum in like the concert photography world. But it was only like local shows. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so yeah. like I'm shooting like all small small venues, and I was at FET, and I remember I was shooting this show. I forgot what it was who it was for, but I was shooting the concert. And then like some other kid was at the time. It's very rarely I would see other f- photographers there. Mm-hmm. But I saw some other like young kid, like short kid there, and I was like, oh, okay. I was like, oh, dope, bro. Like I would go up to them and be like, oh, what's up, man? Like you know, because yeah, I don't yeah. see people, and um, and. That show ended. I went home. I'm like, I go on Instagram. I started following him when I was at the show. <laughs> so I went home. I go on Instagram. And I see, I remember sitting down on my bed and I look at Instagram and he posted a photo. He mm. posted like a few photos of yeah, the show yeah. that I was just in. I was like, what the fuck? Right. I, was like, I just left. <laughs> like, <laughs> and they were so good. Like right. he was like real. Like I haven't seen at that time. I didn't really say the concert photographers like that. So I was like, fuck, this kid is really good. And he just yeah. fucking posted some shit and just kept it pushing afterwards. And yeah, it was yeah. like a reminder, like, oh, you need to edit faster because mm-hmm. it's like at least like for concerts, you need to stop editing so much. You need to like look for like the best photos and just kind of like con- condense it to like you know whatever the best photos you think they are, mm-hmm. and then just like edit and then keep pushing because I was like overly editing, so my editing process was taking really long. So I saw like that he had something that I didn't have, and yeah. I th- and I think of whenever I want to shoot like bigger artists, like you know, um, mm-hmm. it's important to be able to do it faster. Yeah. So that was just like I, I try to stay. I try to stay inspired by anything that I see. Like, as long as yeah. it naturally inspires me, I'm very open to being inspired, whether it's, like, someone who's starting, whether someone's been doing it forever. Yeah. So, I was like, so that was, like, a good reminder, like, oh, shit, you kind of got to get it together a little bit. You've been right, doing right, the same right. for, a little, for a while. So, so it's, like, little things like that kind of, like, inspire me from, like, local artists, too. So. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's dope. I've been, I'm, like, I'm a, I'm, I'm a mixed bag with that in the sense that, especially because of, the like, what podcasting has become in the last five, six years. Yeah. You know, everybody can pick up everybody. a camera Absolutely. and there's like the, uh, the, you know, there's that image you have of like a podcast bro and like, and so I used to, cause I used to be really into listening to a bunch of them. Mm-hmm. And I think over the, over the years, over the last three years, especially over the last year, I really only listen to two now. Um, cause it's oversaturated. So it's like hard to, it's hard to stay on top. It's, it's it is to- a lot. That's, that's a reason. Another reason I, I also don't feel I don't want to feel like 
like my ideas are my own for the stuff that I talk about here. That you don't want to what? That you don't feel like my ideas or whatever I talk about, my ideas, my opinions are my own, Mm -hmm. and that I'm like that I'm feeling, and that's that's like an I think that's an insecurity that I'm battling with in Mm -hmm. terms of. Uh, my originality and it, even how you said about um, that photographer JPEG Johnny I there's a there's a pot there's a podcaster I think he's based in LA now but he's from Providence um, and it's it's like all shout to him because it's like yo he's from Providence and he's doing it big like mm-hmm. he's interviewed I know he, he interviewed like in the last like year or so he's interviewed like Mayor Lorza he's interviewed Jay Ramirez I think he interviewed Jabron um, oh dope well, what's his name? He interviewed Jeremy Pena. I don't know his name. Oh, okay. I forget yeah. his fucking name. I think the name of the podcast is called, like, It's a Vibe. Oh, Complex. Complex. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. He's from Providence, Christ. right? They, they, yeah. They do it here. Oh, they do it here? Yeah, I thought he did it in L.A. Nah, he is crushing it. Yeah, crushing he's doing it. And, and it's yeah, like, yeah, bro, and it's like I that? saw that, and I'm just like, that, like, part of me is like, that's dope. But then there's another part. I think it's more how you're saying how you're competitive. Mm-hmm. How you see, like, he's really killing it. Like, I got to step my shit up. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like, I don't, I I see that he's doing it and that inspires me in a way. But um, I don't, uh, like, I can't listen to, I, I, I haven't, I want to listen to it out of, like, maybe out of respect or out of just seeing what he does mm-hmm. with this platform. But I don't think I can, like, I can't really, like, because I don't, I don't know, there's a, a level of me, like, where I'm just, like, and I think that's something that I'm going to be battling with, mm-hmm. that I'm battling, like I said. But, um, but yeah, I just don't want to feel like I'm copying somebody or that my uh, my ideas aren't my own. Or that, like, oh, you're just saying this because you listen to so-and-so, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I understand. And, beca- I, I, yeah. and because of that, though, it's a, it has inspired me and pushed me to be more creative mm-hmm. with this podcast and have, like, different segments and different things that I do. Mm-hmm. Um. And so I, so I like it, but I also do want to get, I want to get more to a point where I feel like, where I want to embrace me as a podcaster more without having, like, feeling like I'm a fucking douchebag Mm -hmm. (laughs) in a way. And then, and also just like celebrating, especially like people from fucking Providence doing big fucking shit. Yeah. Um, Uh, So that's kind of like, that's, that's a little bit where I'm at with this right now, mm -hmm. you know? I, I I understand that mentality. I don't think, um... I understand. I don't fully agree in the sense that I think if somebody out here is crushing it, I think it's good to see what is it that they're doing differently because that kid, there's nobody, there's nobody out here doing it the way that he's doing it personally, like from Providence. Like I've been watching, I've been watching him for years because he used to do the, he used to do like um, album reviews in the car. Uh That was like how they started him and his boy from my understanding. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, and then they started kind of doing the podcast and that shit took off, but it's like, he's, he takes advantage of his opportunities. He goes out there. I see yeah. him at Daytro. He's outside of Daytro, fucking interviewing people. Just like literally, just I'm. Mean, they were just running from people to people. Mm-hmm. They're like, do I remember at, at PVD Fest they're doing the same things? Like staying on top of it. Like I think that he, the reason why he's so why that team is so successful is because yeah. like the type of work that they're putting into it. So I understand the whole originality thing, but I don't. I don't think it's. Imp- I think it's important to not get too caught up in that because right. nothing's fully original. Like there's nothing that he's doing that's like, right. that's like no one's ever done that. It's not he's new smart enough. Sun. He's just smart enough to be like, oh, this, you know, I'm just doing. I'm just gonna do what I think works best. Right. You know what I mean? And I think the same thing with you. If you watch his stuff and get ins- inspired by something that he does. I think that'll be good because mm-hmm. that could only kind of propel you. You know, that's mm-hmm. the other stuff is early days. That's the way that I see everything that I'm doing. Yeah, like yeah, nothing, yeah. Of, nothing is permanent. Like in a sense of, right. I'm not gonna, there's nothing's gonna determine who I am in the end. So it's just like keep trying. Like I'll see certain things that photographers do, and I'm, I'm not afraid to try different things mm-hmm. that somebody else might do, and even like say like, oh, I was inspired by this person. You know, keep it pushing right, because right. I'm a, because to me that's how you get better. Like there's yeah. there's so much out there. There's so much stuff going on, and if if somebody's out here like killing it a lot more than I am, that I'm kind of curious on what is it that they're doing and why they're doing right, it. Right, so right. Like it's um, like you said, I understand that a lot of it is like c- competitive. I know there's insecurities and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's just and like I hate and it sucks having those thoughts too, because then it's just like, damn, I feel like a, I feel like I'm a, a hater <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, in a way. I, yeah, and yeah. that's why I'm careful with my words, but I'm also like. But I think it's important to to recognize that th- those feelings you're not doesn't necessarily make you a hater. No, it makes you human. Yeah, I I, right. I, I think so, acknowledging yeah. it. I think it's important to acknowledge your feelings head on. Right. You know what I yeah. mean, like acknowledge like acknowledge why you know why you're feeling something because I I allow myself to feel like I could I could feel something. It could like you said it could, I could feel like a straight up hater. And right. I allow myself to feel that way, and then like the next step is like okay, that's out the way. Like why do you feel that way? Facts. You know what I mean. So Absolutely. it's like it's, it's more of like why you feeling that way, and it's like it usually comes back to yourself. So it's like understanding that I think could be a huge change because 
facing your reality is very difficult. I think facing yeah. how you really feel, you know what I mean? Right, like right, right. In my, um, like I said, in, I, in my previous relationship, when we split, like our facing how I truly felt was massive because mm-hmm. I, I didn't, I, w- I would always kind of, I might lie to myself because I wasn't that upfront with, I thought I was right. real with myself before, but I wasn't until you have to really face certain emotions that might seem wrong to everybody else. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. But it's like thinking, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to face it, but it's really, really important, I think, because that's, yeah. you can only get past Absolutely. that by like just facing, you know. Absolutely. I think, I think that's, that I, that in and of itself is, I, I, I I've used that as a pro, I, I've used this podcast as a platform to address a lot of those things mm-hmm. um unfortunately there's been there's been times where like uh you know addressing stuff even like anonymously like it puts it it puts a strain i i've put strain on certain personal relationships because of mm-hmm. the show in the past what do you mean just like talking about talking about some stuff that went down yeah, anonymously yeah yeah, yeah but, still. but like you know they know yeah, they know, they yeah. know who <laughs> they are and i don't you know and it sucks that stuff goes down like that but i also i think that's an important uh, aspect of what makes this show this show. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I've opened up about like you know my previous relationship as well as well here and like my drug abuse in the past. Like I you know I I had you know I used to abuse pills for a, 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 like a couple a few years in New York mm-hmm. in my time there. I'm mean, sort of like just even that how it put strain on my um uh your life my my yeah, life my yeah, personal absolutely. relationships and like moving back here from new york in 2020 like i really had to like and even then like i did a lot and there's there were times where i still felt like wasn't enough which is a big reason why i sort of dissected that whole period of my life in new york mm-hmm. in one episode so i think it's like it's like how you say like it's really important to like face your reality yeah absolutely and and face up to that you're always going to feel like you're always when you try to come out of something you always feel like sometimes it feels like it's never enough like yeah. what you're doing is never enough but right. it is because literally all you can do is just try to change like, yeah, you know, and yeah, if, yeah if you feel that you're working towards that that's there's nothing else that you can do like I, you know right. i'm some I, I i admit if i fuck up and stuff like that but it's like i know that i can change i've proven it to myself that i can change so mm-hmm. it's like it might not always people might not always understand that but they don't really have to understand mm-hmm. that as long as i understand that and i'm working it working on it for myself that's to me that's like what's most important yeah you know? yeah and it's like and you having a podcast too you really have to put yourself out there. So it's like just yeah. having conversations, yeah, 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 a two-hour yeah. conversation with somebody, one-hour conversation with somebody, yeah. a lot of stuff could come from that. So it's like, so it's, it's you're going to step on some toes, you know what I mean? There might right. be some things that you might say that you might not mean because we're all just trying to figure it out. Like, right. you know, I, I always, I used to always see celebrities and be like, oh, why would they, why the fuck would they say that? Or, or you know, if they fuck right. up, but then like, it's not until you get in front of a mic, you're just like, oh, like you're just, you're just figuring it out. Like, yeah, like, right, right, right. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, bro, so it's, I, like it's, yeah. it's tough. It's really hard. It is tough. And it, I think w- I think good ways, a, a great thing that I've learned. So I, I teach full time. I'm a teacher. Oh, nice. I'm actually, I'm getting my oh, MAT. Well, I teach, cool, uh, I'm a, at the, I'm have to edit that. Oh, you can't say it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 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 I've said some wild shit about uh, some yeah, experience yeah. here where, yeah, you know, you probably, yeah, I go, yeah, let's yeah. see, we are 40 no, minutes in. Oh, right. that out. Yeah, yeah, back yeah, and edit that out. But anyway, I teach second grade. <laughs> but I <laughs> That's fucking hilarious Funny enough Because I had so My guest last week um, I had him uh, Is someone I work with uh, okay. She's in education She went to Brown She's fucking super intelligent We had a really good conversation Just about education And being an educator and stuff mm-hmm. Uh, but she works with me, so and we were just very careful about being anonymous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so just for <laughs> for you to just like to yeah, ask me yeah, that yeah, one yeah, question, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's like it's funny because when I asked, it, I was like, maybe I shouldn't have asked. Like, yeah. and then, like I saw your reaction, so right? Uh, that out. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, uh, but um, yeah. It, so I also, but I at that school, I um, because it, it's you know it's an independent school, mm-hmm. and you know it's predominantly white. But I work with um, with uh an affinity group for middle school boys for black and brown boys. Okay. Um, we meet once a month and one of the, like the guy, the guiding principles, we always talk about it is like, whenever you say, assume that everything said, um, whether you felt some type of way about it, I'm paraphrasing it, but it's just like, make sure everything said is said with good intent. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, um, uh, or, or not with bad intent, at least, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. not to hurt somebody. And I think that's really important to have like really good discourse and really good conversation about something because you say something that may not resonate with you, may not feel, you know, may not sit with you a certain way that you would like it to. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that can shut 
a lot of people down. Yeah, I think that's absolutely. what shuts most people down when you're trying to talk about something and, and like dig deeper on something. Mm-hmm. So I think that's that's something I re- I've learned that's really important. Yeah, especially so, nowadays. Yeah, of course. Every, everybody yeah. takes. I do. I feel like people take things very personal. Yes, like constantly, and they yeah, feel like everything right. is like. It's like, oh, you said you like blue. He's like, but what about red? Like, I'm red. You know what I mean? Right, so right, right, like, right. It's like, why don't you, what happened with red? Like, it's just Facts. like, bro, this isn't about that. Like, you know what I mean? So it's, of course. I think people take things very too personal, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's like kind of like the way things are going, you know? So. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. You know what? I, I want to take this time to transition into something. And I, I, I touched on it. I touched on, you're Dominican, right? Yeah. Of yeah. course. Where's your family from in DR, by the My way? My mom is from Villa Gracia. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. 